Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain SiteWorks training videos. What we're going to do in this video is load up the data collector, the SiteWorks program, with a project. We're going to start from the ground up. If you watched my last video, I did all the exports for a small project out of Trimble Business Center. But if you haven't seen that video and you just have the file types, the DXF, the TTM, the VCL, the control points, whatever you may have, this video will help you to load up a brand new project into SiteWorks. So when you first come into your open project option right here, the very first thing we need to fill out is the projects. We're going to create the project. So if you have projects, you can drop the drop down bar here and actually load other projects. But if it's brand new, we're going to hit this plus symbol to the right. So right off the bat here, we're going to name the project. Now the name of this project is going to stay through the duration. This is not names of designs. This is the name that will stay with the project. So we will call this the site tech. Intermountain training. I do want to go through every single one of these options right here because the worst thing you can have is a situation where you don't know what each one of these means and you just blow through it. So knowledge is power. We're going to break some of these down. These are the default settings that Trimble has in here, which most of these settings will always work for most of your projects. But just be aware of a couple of these. For example, this very first one right here, distances. You need to make sure that you are in the right uh, uh, distances for the, are you in meters, international fee, U.S. survey fee. These two are going to be changing here in the U.S. For pretty soon. But U.S. survey fee is what my project is on. You can change between degrees and gongs on the angles. And coordinate order. This one does get people in trouble sometimes. What this represents is point, northing, easting, and elevation. If you drop it down, the other option is point, easting, northing, uh, and elevation. My project is in point, northing, easting, but that's what the differences are in that one. Your grid coordinate can be north and east or south and west. There again, these default settings are most likely what you're going to use. Uh, and also the north and south on this one. The stationing may not apply to you unless you're running a stationing alignment on a job site like a highway or a long road. And these settings do play into that the way that they've been sent out to you, like a single plus a pair, single plus a triple. Um, you, If it's just a small project like mine, we're just going to leave this at the default. But just be aware of at least distances and the coordinate order as you do this. If everything's good here, we go ahead and hit next. Now in this box right here, or this uh, page, there's a lot going on right here. What I'm going to explain real quick is this select project map. You don't need to put a project map in there because a project map is going to ask you for a DXF line work. So if you want a basic background map, you can set in there EOP, a building, a perimeter, whatever you want, or you can put even your design DXF in there. But I warn you that it's unselectable line work, meaning if you put it in there, but you see those lines on your main screen, you or your operators or whoever's using your data collector may think it's selectable line work and it will be confusing. You can turn it off if it is put in there. So I never really put in the project map, but for this training video, I am going to show you what happens if you do put it in there. So I'm going to hit this box right here to the left, and then you can hit the gray area. If you go in here, where, what it's asking is where are we finding all this information? Up here, is it on your Windows C drive or is it on a drive that you have plugged in? Mine happens to be in the E drive, which is a thumb drive I have plugged in. So down here you can see that I've got a project in here that actually is named that, uh, that we're trying to pull the files from. So we're going to open that one, going to hit accept, and in here I have the different file types. So right here I have a storm drain DXF and a finished grade DXF. We will go ahead and load this just to show you what that map will look like later on. The site calibration is something that I don't normally put in here because I don't have a calibration. You're actually going to do the calibration yourself. But if someone does provide you a calibration and you trust it, the engineering firm, whatever, you can plug in their calibration. But in this instance, I'm not going to plug one in because I'm going to do my own site calibration. And that's why this next box comes up, control points. If you have an engineering firm set you up control points, they've given you the northing, easting, and elevation on a CSV file right here. You can plug that in to where you don't have to key it in. If you don't have the CSV file, you can 
key in the northern easting and elevations later on, but there's always the human element that you may possibly uh, fat finger something or key it in wrong. So if you get it provided to you in a CSV file, which is basically an Excel spreadsheet, you can put that in here and I'll show you that. So right here, coordinate system, I clicked it. We don't need to change this style guide. We're just gonna leave the default. We're gonna bring in a CSV file by clicking on this box right here. So in here, it already automatically starts to look where I was at in, in the last one. So at E drive at the top, it already stayed there. It stayed in my project and it's already looking for that CSV file. So all I gotta do is click it and hit accept and it will put that CSV file in here from the engineers that provided it. An FXL file, if you have that, that's a feature code library. That is a file that can be imported or you can use a default one for every project. And I will do a feature code library video later on, but we're not gonna get into that at this point. And then down here, coordinate system, you're not gonna do a coordinate system because I'm gonna calibrate a site to the CSV control points. So I want control of making my own site control and positioning off of the engineered points that were given to me. I'm gonna uncheck that box, I'm good. I've got my site map control points in, we're gonna hit finish in the bottom right here. So the site is created at least in the project. Now it needs a work order. Work orders, if any of you don't know what they are, it is the folder separation of any control point, or excuse me, points that you shoot on the job site. What that means is if I'm going to go record manholes, water valves, a stockpile, I'm going to record existing conditions, anything that I actually hit the button on my data collector to record an infilled point or line work or whatever it may be, it's going to be folderized inside the work order. You create one and you can create multiple different ones for different days, for different activities, whatever it is. But right off the bat, we need to have one to start with. So I'm going to hit the plus symbol and I will just call this the calibration. Um, we don't need to put instructions in there. Just give it a name. Go ahead and hit finish. Now on design, the last thing that we need to go to actually get going is to create my designs in here. So you can see in the drop down, I don't have any right now. So I'm gonna hit the plus button right here to get started with this. I've got three different ones that we're gonna load up real quick. I've got a storm drain, a finish grade, and a VCL file. So we will call this the site tech finish grade just to get going. Now right here, there's a bunch of different options here. Let me break this down. When it says select design file, the file is gonna be the TTM file, which is the surface underneath that you would walk along. The design line work is your DXF. So in my finished grade, I do have both of those files, but I'm gonna go one at a time. So right here for design file, check that box, come over here and tap to select it. It already stayed in my E drive, which is my thumb drive, and it's going to take me back to the project folder. So I'm going to open the project folder and you can see that I've got two different options in here. I'll explain why it's asking for a VCL also, but it's only looking for a TTM. The program knows to look for that file type. So I'm going to bring in my finished grade TTM. Now, same process up here. I'm going to go down to my line work and I'm going to go ahead and select that box. It's going to ask for where we're looking for it. Same process. And I've got two DXFs in here. So you got to be aware of which one you're doing. I don't want the storm drain right now. I want my finished grade. So I'm going to select that. And now I have a project that's set up right here. The stakeout points you don't have to add unless you want to. These are very clearly it's stakeout points, not my actual control points on the job site. Stakeout points can come in with that project or we can add later on. I don't have any of that for this project. So just those two files right there. We hit finish at the bottom right. I've got a project and a, um, a design. So let me hurry and add in a couple more. I've got a site tech, oops, storm drain. This one is not going to have a TTM though. If you watched my last video, this one does not have a surface underneath it. It is simply just line work. It's DXF. So all I need to check in here is to go and find the DXF which was that other one in here that's my storm drain, as you can see here. So we'll bring that one in, and that's all I need to bring in. It's just line work, and I'll show you what they look like here in a minute. So we'll hit finish in the bottom right. You can see that I've got two projects now. Let's do one more, which is a VCL file. So what we'll do is we'll bring in, uh, we'll go ahead and name this one the site tech finish grade, 
but we'll call it the VCL file just to keep it separate. So it is still my finished grade, but it's just all encompassing. It has all of those together. So this one is a little bit different where you're wondering, okay, well, I only have one file, which is a VCL. Which one do I put it in here? It actually is going to auto populate both of these. So it doesn't matter which one I start with, but I'm going to start with this design file at the top, which would have been normally a VC or excuse me, TTM. But I'm going to come back into the same project in my E drive and I'm going to select this VCL file. Now, as soon as I hit this, well, one more time, you can see if you, if you don't have the opportunity to drag this bar over out in the field, it's hard with your finger. As soon as you select it, it will show you right here too. Just another little caveat. So we're going to hit accept. <clears throat> and now you can see that this one's grayed out down here. And it already kind of op auto populated because the VCL file encompasses everything, all the line work, all the surface, everything that I exported out in that file type. So there again, I don't need to do anything beyond this point except hit finish at the bottom right. So now that we have the project set up, we'll go ahead and hit accept in the bottom right and we'll load this project. Once this project comes up, you can see that everything lands right where it's supposed to be. And the other thing to look for that I've learned in the past is to look at these little triangles and make sure that they land where they're supposed to also. So these little triangles around the outside are your control points that you loaded, the, the CSV file. So in the little gear here to the right side, if you hit that gear, I actually, when I do a site calibration, which I will do a full calibration in another video, like to turn on point name right here, just to make sure that I see where everything lands Understand that, okay, I've got control point 2001, 2000, 05, 04, et cetera, et cetera, and they're in the right spot. If you ever open this project up, a project up, and this down here at the bottom where it says 300 feet is way, way up in the air, control points are on one end of the screen, and your design line works in another spot, you'll know that something didn't line up between the, the model and the control points. So... Over here in the left screen, you can go ahead and hit this bottom button here to switch to this one, which you can zoom in and actually look at that TTM surface, which is that uh, the surface where you walk around on it. You're always going to have this cut fill, this fill A up here. So, But just those are some double checks, some quick ways to actually make sure that everything's set right. You're good to go. You can turn your rover on. We can do the site calibration. The next thing we can do after that we feel like we've got the, the finished grade design set right, we can check the other design. For example, uh, up here in the top left where the menu is, if we go into the menu and go to project setup, you can go right here to change project. So we'll go in here and check uh, maybe at least the storm drain because we know the finished grade and the VCL file are pretty well the same files and in essence uh, what, mostly what we're going to see. So in the storm drain right here, I'm going to go ahead and load that just to verify that that one looks right on the screen also. So there again, here's where um, that site map comes into play. So you can see that I loaded a project that would only show, should only show the storm drain and the edge of pavement. So I only have selectable line work for any of that. But the reason why we're still seeing all this other map in here is because of that site map that I told you we loaded. So some of this stuff over here, like the building footprint, none of this is selectable. If I touch and hold on it, you can see that it's not giving me the option to actually select it as a line to stake. But if I come over here to storm drain, which is part of my design, I can actually stake that line. So if you ever get in a scenario where you have this map in the background, but you want it off, there is the gear on the right side right here. You can come in here and you can go to the design and there's project map right here. So if you turn off the project map and then hit accept, that map can be turned off. So I personally don't load site maps myself, but if you do load them, just be aware of that. It's actually gonna show everything in the background regardless of what design you switch to. But now you can see that I've got what I actually did export out. It's my storm drain, my boxes, my manhole, but I did bring in the edge of pavement just as a reference for me to have some sort of a reference to that stuff. So, but thank you for watching this Site Tech Intermountain SiteWorks training video on loading up SiteWorks with a brand new project with the file types.